represent uh, uh, this area of mathematics which uh, actually goes back quite a while. Quite a while means uh, really quite a while. The problem was posed by none other than Euclid around 200 BC and that is a, is a problem that took about a couple of thousand years to solve. Yeah. And so part of the purpose of this talk is to actually explain to you why it took such a long time for it to, uh, for, for, the, for the talk to actually, uh, for this um, problem to be resolved. Okay, so here's the thing. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so let's let's just go back to school where we first got exposed to Euclidean geometry, yeah. and we start with this axiomatic system of geometry. These were the axioms formulated by Euclid around 200 BC, and uh, let's revisit those. So what does it say? It says basically that given any two points in a plane, there's a straight line segment that joins them. Yeah? The point of this axiom is basically to say that look, this is going to be one player in the game. What is that? Uh, so the, the player in the game is basically uh, a straight line segment and that's what we uh, this is, this is the initial pair in the game. The second thing, so basically what are the objects that are going to be used for describing the geometry in our setup? So that's, that's what we are going to be talking about. Yeah. So the first thing, first pair in the game is a straight line segment. Okay. Um, so we have said this is a straight line, but uh, typically we nowadays, in order to distinguish it from bi-infinite straight lines, we basically talk about straight line segments Segment. versus bi-infinite straight lines. So the first axiom introduces the first player in the game, which is a straight line segment. Okay. The second axiom basically says that a finite straight line, that means a straight line segment, which has been introduced by the first axiom as a player in the game can be extended infinitely in both directions. So the second axiom really introduces another player in the game, also called by infinite, called a by infinite straight line. Fine. So two of these are here: straight line segments, by infinite straight lines. The third axiom says what a circle is: given a point, given a radius, the locus of points which are at this fixed distance from the initial fixed point has a name, it's called a circle. Yeah. And the fourth axiom basically says it introduces the notion of a special angle, namely the right angle. So what's a right angle? And what's the content of this fourth axiom really? So what is the definition of a right angle? When we when we think of, uh, yeah, so we, we told a right angle is 90 degrees. So that's, a, just, that's just a change of a name. But here, the notion of a right angle is actually dependent on the notion of a bi-infinite straight line that has gone on before it. Yeah. So what is it? So what is a right angle? So basically, you take a straight line, take a point on it, then you look at the angle from minus infinity to infinity based at that point. Yeah. This angle, when it is bisected, the angle that results is called a right angle. So what's the content of this fourth axiom when it says all right angles are equal? It basically means that given any by infinite straight line as formulated by axiom 2 in the plane, and any point on it, you bisect the straight angle from minus infinity to infinity at that point, and the angle that you get is going to be a right angle. All these right angles that you get are equal to each other, independent of the straight line you started off with, independent of the point you chose on the straight line. Yeah. So, so these are the first four axioms of Euclid. And they define not plane geometry, but they define any geometry. Yeah. So when you're, when you're talking about just geometry in the abstract, what does 
the tab, it has these flares in the game. Straight line segments, bioinfinite straight lines, circles, angles, right angles in particular. Fine. So it's really introducing what are the objects of interest? What are the players in the game? The fifth axiom has a different status. What does it say? It says that, look, you take some straight line, some vertical straight line, say, and you have two lines falling, two lines cutting across it, yeah? So straight line falling on two straight lines. So once you have a straight line like this and you have two other straight lines, now on one side, suppose the sum of the interior angles is less than 180 degrees, right? But what this axiom says is that if you extend these two guys, they are, the, those two straight lines, they are going to meet on the same side on which the sum of the angles is less than 180 degrees. Okay? So if, if on the right side of this vertical line, the sum of the angles is less than 180 degrees, it's going to meet on that side. Okay? If the sum of the angles is less than 180 degrees on the other side, yeah, then it's going to meet on that side. And what if uh, neither of these situations happen? Which means what? Which means that the sum of the angles of the, of the interior angles is neither less than 180 degrees, nor is it greater than 180 degrees, which means? Yes, 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 speak up. It's, it's very boring to go on giving a one-sided lecture. So please, there's, there's most of you are students. Just speak up, interrupt me at any time, yeah? If you have questions, that they're most welcome. Yeah, yes? They should be parallel. They are equal, yes, so they are parallel. parallel. Okay, good. So, now that's not something that's, that's formulated here. Let's call that parallelism for the time being. So I'm reminded of this, this there's this poem of, uh, uh, of uh, Shukumar Rai, right? It's about Hukumuka muka hangla. So what it has two tails, right? So if the if if a fly sits on the right side of its spine, it uses its right tail to swat it. If it use if the fly sits on the left side of the spine, it uses its left tail to swat it. But in his book of rules, if there's some mischievous fly which sits goes and sits exactly in the center in the middle, it doesn't have a tail to swat it. So which means what? These rules basically tell you that if the sum of the angles is less than 180 on the left, meets on the left. Sum of the angles of, uh, is less than 180 degrees on the right, meets on the right. But if it's exactly equal to 180 degrees, the lines don't know which side to meet. That's all that we can deduce from this axiom. Mm. Yeah. So in order to say something more than that, took another 100 years. And this is a formulation, this fifth guy, this has got a name, it became called the parallel postulate. So the first four are really axioms, and the fifth axiom has a different name, it's called a fifth postulate. A postulate does not really have the status of certitude as an axiom. Yeah? So, so this one, this fifth guy got reformulated, it's also called the Playfair's axiom. And around 100 BC, about 100 years after Euclid, it was shown that the fifth postulate is equivalent to the following statement. And this is the statement of the fifth postulate that all of us are familiar with. What is it? Through a point, not on a straight line, there is one and only one straight line through the point parallel to the given straight line. So this is the fifth postulate. So since this has a different status from the first four axioms, the first four axioms define for you certain